Hey there, Congresswoman Kat Kamak here, proudly representing Florida's third congressional district, the Gator Nation. As we near the end of the year and prepare for Christmas and get ready to usher in 2022, I wanted to take a moment to reflect on all that we've accomplished this year during my first term and what you can look forward to as we head into next year. It has been the honor and a privilege of a lifetime to represent you in our nation's capital. I know that there is still so much work to be done this Congress. So let's get started, shall we? On day one in office, the Cat Cam Act team started serving Florida's third congressional district and was ready to get to work for you. With a fully staffed and operational office and the team standing by to help in our district, we hit the ground running as promised. In Washington, D.C., Orange Park, and Gainesville, we got to work right away, diving into the issues that our constituent, constituents, you, care about most. In January, we began working diligently on rural broadband challenges in our area, meeting with all of our providers, including Windstream, SpaceX, the FCC, and the state, to determine coverage gaps, understand the timeline for service implementation, and how we can better push for internet for all of our constituents. It is no longer acceptable for our kids to be doing their homework in the McDonald's parking lot. We will continue to be a driving force for reliable, affordable, and accessible high-speed internet in Florida's third district and beyond. And I am proud to announce that thousands more connections have been established since we took office. This is only the beginning, however, and we will not stop until this persistent challenge receives real, lasting solutions. Earlier this year, I also visited every single one of our counties in the district to check in with our health leaders at our various vaccination sites. Governor DeSantis and his team have worked hard to put our seniors first, ensuring the more vulnerable citizens amongst us receive the COVID vaccine in a timely manner when and if they wanted it. It's certainly true that when I say that we have some of the most dedicated public servants, healthcare workers, and first responders taking care of us in Florida's third. During the last two difficult years, I'm especially grateful for the work that they have done to keep our communities and our state safe. Throughout the last year, I have crisscrossed the district hundreds of times, logging over 12,000 miles across our six counties alone. I visited with small, business, small businesses working to recover from the pandemic and battling the surging inflation. I've toured our local farms to meet with watermelon, blueberry, timber, dairy producers, and beyond. We've hosted roundtables with veterans, Second Amendment advocates, seniors, parents, law enforcement leaders, and more. And I visited with local school children and their teachers to share more about governing in Washington, D.C and I've marked landmark celebrations for our towns and our cities. Though what I've mentioned is simply a snapshot of last year, through it all, I have been honored to serve Florida's third congressional district in Congress. In Washington, I've been hard at work on the issues that matter most to you, working to increase opportunities for all Americans while limiting the scope of the federal government's power. As we've seen over the last year, Biden's administration didn't waste time going after our businesses, our wallets, our national security, our medical decisions, and more. I'm proud to say that I have continued to be an advocate in telling the Biden administration that enough is enough. And at the beginning of this Congress, I introduced the RAINS Act, which is intended to provide a check on the regulations pushed by the executive branch that have a crushing effect on American industry, businesses, and workers. This bill would require congressional oversight of every major rule proposed by the executive, and it has received the overwhelming support of the majority of House Republicans. If we've seen anything over the last year, it's, a, it's past time for Congress to re-embrace its oversight responsibility and rein in the overreaching influence and power of the executive branch. Additionally, I proudly introduce the discharge petition for the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act. This petition, which set the record in American history for the most signatures in a single day, would force Speaker Pelosi to vote on a bill that she has denied 76 times that affords children born alive after a failed abortion attempt with the same care as any other child born in the United States. I've shared my story about why I'm pro-life 
and I will continue to stand up for those most vulnerable among us. Now, on the international front, we have seen the growing influence of the Chinese Communist Party, their attacks on our intellectual property, the sovereignty of our ally Taiwan, and the continued aggression in the face of the truth of COVID-19. Earlier this year, I introduced the Chinese Communist Party Politburo Accountability Act to combat the CCP's illegal and reprehensible intellectual property and human rights violations, specifically targeting high-ranking officials who have knowingly violated U.S. laws. This bill holds China accountable, accountable for its IP theft, economic warfare, military aggression, and disregard for the value of human life. Now, many of you in Florida's third have also been concerned about the crisis at our southwest border and the lack of attention paid to the need for enhanced security and law and order there. As of November 2021, more than 1.5 million illegals have crossed into the United States, aided by the lack of enforcement by this administration. Instead of the border wall, more resources for our Customs and Border Patrol agents and policies like remain in Mexico and Title 42, illegals from all over the world have been allowed to waltz right into the United States, released into our communities in the dead of night with no way of tracking their whereabouts and knowing who they are. Quite simply, every town in America has become a border town. Earlier this year, I took sheriffs and police chiefs from Florida's third district to see the situation at the southwest border for themselves. And I believe one of our sheriffs said it best when he remarked that the very same drugs that you see crossing the border one day are the very same narcotics killing our citizens the very next. Until we get a handle on this public health, national security and humanitarian crisis, this disaster of President Biden's making will only get worse. In my role on the Homeland Security Committee, my colleagues and I have introduced a number of measures to slow down this crisis and put an end to its devastation, but to little avail, as the Democrat-controlled Congress and administration have failed to even acknowledge the existence of this crisis. But we will not give up until the wall is finished, the border is secure, and we stop this flow of illegal immigrants coming into our country. It's irresponsible, it's wrong, and we cannot afford the toll that it is taking on our communities. And speaking of national security, our team continues to work hard in getting the remaining Americans and our allies out of Afghanistan. Earlier this summer, when Biden failed our country, our military service members, our veterans, and our allies around the world, congressional leaders stepped up to make sure that we did not leave a single American behind. Now, while the images of American cargo jets rolling down the runway at Karzai International Airport will likely stay with us for many years to come, please know that there are dedicated offices, representatives, and senators working hard each and every day to bring every single American home. Now, in my role on House Agriculture Committee, and as the lone Florida Republican serving on agriculture, I have made it my mission to remind our state and our country that food security is national security. I am so proud to represent and advocate for the Florida producers who help keep America fed, especially during the pandemic when schools and businesses and churches closed down, leaving few options for families in need. I've had the privilege of traveling across Florida, from the Panhandle to Miami, hearing from our producers firsthand to better understand the challenges that they face in our modern economy. We must remain competitive in the global market and thwart threats from foreign producers like China and Mexico. Finally, as we head into the new year, the topic of vaccine mandates and personal health decisions remain at the forefront of our conversations here in Washington and at home. Since day one, I have stirred firm in the belief that no government has the authority to tell you whether or not you should get the vaccine. Your job should not be at risk because of the medical decisions that you and your family, along in consultation with your doctor, make. I've helped fight back against these unconstitutional vaccine mandates at the local level in the city of Gainesville, alongside our first responders and for federal employees across the country being forced from their posts for failing to comply with an unconstitutional order. I'll say it once more for anyone who needs to hear it in the back. 
Your medical decisions are yours and yours alone. We're lucky to have leaders like Governor DeSantis who stand up and fight back. And it is the honor of my life to serve the American people in Congress. I'm proud to be the voice for my constituents in Florida's third district. It is a privilege to be able to serve alongside patriots on both sides of the aisle who bring experience, intellect, and a love for America to work every single day. I look forward to continuing to be a voice for the voiceless and serving you, my constituents, neighbors, and friends with all of my energy and enthusiasm. God bless you and God bless America. From myself, my husband, Matt, and all of us on Team Cat, we wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.